Welcome back to the Radiant Vista. I'm Mark Johnson. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to do a video tutorial on creating an extremely high contrast black and white look. Alec Johnson in St. Paul, Minnesota is the one who inspired me to do this tutorial. He and I had a phone conversation and, and he sent a subsequent email with information about what he does to create this look. Alec was inspired by the March-April 2006 issue of Lenswork Magazine, uh, Lenswork Magazine, and if you haven't checked that one out, you really should. It's a great publication. Um, specifically, the work of William Fuller is what inspired Alec in that particular edition of the magazine. And so Alec went about trying to create a similar look for his architectural work. Uh, he's really trying to distill the essence of his architectural, ar architectural images by turning them into high contrast black and white images where um, the eye is focused in on the bright and the dramatic contrasty parts of the scene. I'm actually going to read a little tiny bit of Alex's email and I'm going to paraphrase some of this but here's what he had to say. Most important I believe is my personal intent and what I want to accomplish. I'm not just playing around in Photoshop to see what happens. Yes, black and whites can be dramatic, but I'm also interested in form function in the relationship of one thing to another. As Craig has mentioned several times on Radiant Vista, color is its own idea and therefore can also be distracting. Black and white in architecture and other subjects really provides the vehicle I'm looking for to show what I want to show. This effort in Photoshop was inspired by the work of William Fuller featured in the March-April 2006 issue of Lens Work. I wanted to recreate this darkroom effect in Photoshop and I think I'm just about there. Well these are a couple of images that you see right here that Alex shot and um, I want to bring up the color versions here and show you a technique for taking these color images uh, that are less interesting and turning them into something dramatic like what you see here on the screen. Uh, Alec shared with me his technique for doing this. Uh, the way I'm going to approach it is going to be different from his technique um, just because that's my personal vision for things here. But let me go ahead and take a crack at this and show you how I might achieve the look that you see right here on the screen. Let me pull this image out of here for a moment and let's start with this image right here. You can see here's the color version on the right and here's the black and white version on the left. And I'm going to go in and try and turn this color version into the black and white one um, with as few steps as I possibly can. And I'm going to begin here uh, by taking a look in the channels palette and see if there is any channel that moves me in the right direction. And I oftentimes find that the red channel will do that right off the bat. So I'm going to go into the channels palette, which I have nested here next to my layers palette. And I'm going to click on the red, the green, and the blue channels and take a look at those. And sure enough, the red one is at least moving in the right direction. So I'll go back to the composite RGB channel here and into the layers palette. And I'm going to apply a channel mixer adjustment layer by choosing layer, new adjustment layer, channel mixer. And in the new layer dialog box here, I'll just call this one black and white. And I'll click OK. And in the channel mixer dialog that pops up, I'll switch to black and white by clicking the monochrome box. And I've already got red set to 100% here. I could certainly play around with this slider and some of these other sliders here and get a look just by mixing together those three different channels to get a look that I'm after. But Alec wants something more specific here so I'm going to go ahead and leave red set to 100% and click OK. And now with this particular image I think I can just go in and use one levels adjustment layer and achieve what we're after. So let's take a look at doing that. We'll choose layer, new adjustment layer and levels and I'll call this one high contrast black and white and click OK and in the levels dialog box um, you can see my histogram here now one thing I didn't do that I'm gonna do in just a moment here is pull up the full histogram so let me click OK for just a moment and I'll choose window histogram and pop open my expanded view histogram because this gives you the true representation. Now normally I switch this from RGB to luminosity 
doesn't matter if I do that or not right here because my image is already viewing um, or already just exhibiting luminosity values. It's a black and white image. There is no color involved. So it doesn't matter if I switch to luminosity if I'm working on a black and white picture. I will click this yield sign with the exclamation point and see where the tones are mapped in my image. And I can see I already have a few tones here that are pure black. I have a lot right here in the middle tone range. And I have this big spike here that I'll call highlights with detail, but I don't have any pure whites in the scene. So now I'll reopen that levels adjustment layer that I created a moment ago by double clicking on this layer thumbnail. And that brings up the levels dialog. Hard to see things at this point, so I'll move it out of the way best I can. And I already have some pure blacks, and I can check that by holding down Option or Alt here. Um, you can see where those pure blacks exist. In the case of what Alec is doing and what William did, there in the lens work publication, uh, there are definitely some pure blacks in that scene. So I'm going to move this inward and get a pretty fair number of pure blacks and take a look into my dark areas there. That gives me a lot of really strong pure blacks, but they're not standing out very much from these midtones or these highlights with detail. So I'm going to deal with that by coming over to the highlight end of the spectrum here. And I can hold down the Option or Alt key and move this one in. And now I'm actually starting to fry out or blow out some of those highlight details. Well, looking at Alex's picture, it looks like he didn't do that. He wanted to hold detail. He intentionally wanted to hold some detail in those highlights, but push them close to the edge. So I want to move this back until I have very bright information up here, but it's not completely blown out. Now I'm going to move right in here to the middle tone slider. And I'm going to move that left to lighten the middle tones or right to darken them. Essentially what you're doing is you're remapping the middle tones. If I move this to the left, I'm saying what was left of or darker than a middle tone is now th this huge spike here which represents all of these areas. It's Those are now all middle tones. So I'm effectively lightening uh, the middle tones if I do that. Well, looks like Alec, Alec chose to darken them. So I'm going to move this to the right and take a look at what happens when I do that. Now if I use the preview switch, which you can't see, it's off screen here, but if I switch it on and off, there's my starting point and here's my finishing point for that image. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to actually refresh my histogram here. You can see these spikes that are occurring. That might be the result of a low um, quality uh, or low resolution JPEG file, or in this case, it's the result of this image having a very um, abrupt transitions between dark and bright areas. So there's not a smooth transition between this dark area and this bright area. So that is probably why I'm seeing these gaps in my histogram. That would sometimes concern me if my image was full of smooth tonal transitions. But in this particular scene, uh, the transitions are very fast between dark and light. So I'm not re really concerned about seeing those spikes. Now let me just move this over get a little bit out of the way here. When I look at these two scenes now, and actually let's do this too. Let's tab away the palettes and move these side by side. They're actually pretty similar uh, in this case, so not a whole lot more needs to be done in this particular image. So I'm going to move on to another one, but first let me show you um, what the color image looks like. Let's get this out of here so we have the clutter gone. What the color image looks like relative to the black and white. Here's the color image. It's an interesting shot, but it really doesn't grab you. But when you get into this black and white look, particularly when you turn it into something ultra high contrast, the scene becomes much more graphic. You're really distilling the essence of this scene. It is about shape and form and has very little to do with the color harmonies that are happening in there. So uh, I think it, it dramatically improves the look of this architectural scene. Let's move this one out of here and take a look at another one. Here is another image, and let's tab these palettes out of the way. Here's another image that Alec worked on, um, and here is the original. Let's see if I can get these both to fit in here. Here's the original. You can see this is a fairly flat, or actually it's a really flat color scene, lacking drama. Well, you can see that Alec went in here and he added a ton of contrast to the sky to bring out the drama that could be happening in that sky. and. He added a lot of contrast and brightness here to the pier and set it apart from the dark water by really letting the water go dark. So we're going to try to achieve that similar look using a technique similar to what we just did with maybe a uh, modification or two. 
All right, so I'm going to leave his a little bit visible so I can see what he did there. And now I'm going to start off again by looking in the channels palette and see if any of my channels take me in the right direction. So let's take a peek. Here's the red, very flat still. Here's green, also flat. And here's blue. So what I want to do is I want to start from the channel that still has information in everything. They're all flat. None of them are actually um, moving me down the path toward what I want here. But this red channel has all of the tonal information, meaning that if I look into the histogram, you can see that I haven't lost any detail in any part of the scene there. Nothing spiked up here at the highlight end or down here at the shadow end. So I'm going to go back to the composite RGB channel there and into the layers palette. And I'm going to start by adding a channel mixer. And this time, we're going to just call this one black and white like we did last time and click OK. This time in the channel mixer dialog box we're once again going to use the red channel and we'll switch on monochrome. So that's at least a start. Again you could play around with these sliders if you want but I'm going to take a different approach right now. I'll click OK and the next thing I want to do is really make this more dramatic. Now if I run levels I have a suspicion that if I um, run the same levels adjustment for the entire scene that I'm not going to be able to achieve this look right here. So I think I'm going to have to work on a couple levels adjustments and use the mask. So let's start by choosing layer, new adjustment layer, levels. You'll notice um, I am not setting the mode here to luminosity and that's again because I'm working on a black and white picture. Color is already out of the out of the picture for us here. so there's no need to go into luminosity mode um, because you can't inadvertently affect saturation that doesn't exist in the first place. So you can leave it set to normal for black and white pictures. Now I'll click OK and in the levels dialog box I'm going to focus my attention on the sky here. Let's move this one in to make the dark portion of the sky darker. If I want to check to see if I'm pushing anything to pure black, I can hold down Option or Alt. I'm not so concerned about that right now. I just want to be visual about this, assuming I'm working on a well-calibrated monitor. Now I'm going to move this highlight slider in and get those bright areas brighter, although that starts to blow them out. I want to be careful not to lose any of my detail in there. And then I'll move this middle tone one around. And when I move it a little bit to the right, I get even more drama out of those clouds. Let's double check all of these or, or give them a second adjustment. Just push them around a little bit until you have really dramatic looking clouds. Now when I press OK, you'll notice that that it did a wonderful job on my sky up there. But look, it completely uh, ruined the foreground. So I'm going to use the mask here and eliminate this foreground uh, from this adjustment. And with this layer active or this mask active, what I can do is I can paint with black in this area down here. Now I can save myself some time by using the rectangular marquee tool right here. Slide this over just a bit. And I can drag the rectangular marquee out. And I'm going to move it around. I'm holding down the space bar right now so that I can reposition it. And then I am going to let go of the space bar and drag some more and that's allowing me to resize it. Now if I want to fill this area with black what I'll be doing is hiding or eliminating this levels adjustment from this portion of the image. So I will choose edit fill and I'll fill with black or since black is my background color here I can hold down uh, command and press delete on the Mac or that'd be control backspace on the PC. So that eliminates that. Now I want to deselect, so I'll choose Select, Deselect. And I'm going to further refine this by going in with the brush. And I'll use a black brush here at 100% opacity. So I'll tap 100 on the keyboard. Might zoom up a little bit closer. And I've got a soft brush. So if I want to soften that transition at all, and actually it looks like I just don't need to do that much, but if I want to soften that transition just a little bit along the horizon, I can just let the soft edge of that brush sort of kiss the horizon line like that. Now I need to do a levels adjustment for this area down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Levels. 
and I'll call this one, um, let's give this one the name um, Contrasty Peer. I hope I spelled that correctly. And I'll click OK. Now I'm going to just look in the pier, or look at the pier and into the water here. So move this in to get some richer blacks and move this in to really brighten up some of those highlights. And I'll move this one around. I play with each one of these sliders several times before I leave the dialog box because I want to get just the right balance between what's happening with the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. That really helps make the pier stand out, I think. So I'll press OK. And as you can see, it had an effect on the sky. So since I took the time to work on this mask, which is the top portion of the scene, I am going to uh, borrow that and invert it to make it so it's affecting just the bottom portion of the scene. So to borrow that, I'll hold down Option on the Mac or Alt on a PC, and I will slide this mask right up on top of the other mask there, and it will say, do I want to replace the layer mask? And I say yes. So still I have exactly the opposite of what I want. So I can invert that by pressing control or sorry, command or control I, which is the same thing as doing image adjustments invert. So that's command or control I. That's gonna swap my ma my mask. It's gonna make white black and black white. Now if I switch the eyeball on and off, you can see that it's affecting just the bottom of that image. Let me tab my palettes away for a second here and let's take a look at these two scenes. You can see Alec chose to make his pier much brighter than what I have. So let me go back in here because obviously he wanted to focus the viewer's attention in on that. Let me go back into the contrasty pier, pier uh, adjustment layer here and let's make this much brighter. and move this one in a little bit more. So it's even more extreme contrast than what I initially did right there. It really takes some finessing to try and match what he's got. I'll click OK and now tab the palettes away and you can see his is still even brighter and actually a little bit flatter. So um, if I wanted to continue down that path um, I might consider going in and doing a little bit of a dodge effect on this. Uh, let's just take a look at that quickly. If I want to dodge this, um, personally the way I like to dodge is to add a unique dodge and burn layer. And so I'm going to choose layer, new layer. This is a pixel bearing layer. I'll call this dodge and burn. And to make this work I want to change the mode to soft light. So change the mode to soft light, click OK. And now if I want to just lighten this area up, what I do is I use the brush and the color white, or the absence of color, which is white. And so I'm going to press D to get my defaults and X to exchange white to the foreground there. Now if I paint with 100% white, that's going to be a heavy duty dodge or lighten on the pier. And in the case of trying to match what he's got, that's not too bad. Let's, um, let's actually reduce the opacity down to about 75% and let's get in here and just run that along. Now this pier uh, has a hard edge and it's pretty straight lines so one thing I could do is I can harden the edge on my brush by holding down shift and the right bracket key. I'm tapping the right bracket key several times. I don't want a completely hard edge but I'll back off just one bracket key. So try the shift and the bracket key to make your brush harder or smaller and now uh, harder or smaller, harder or softer. Now to make it smaller I'll use the left bracket key there and I can come in and I can click once right here and then I can move down here and I can shift click and I can move down here and shift click and just continue on down the pier the whole way there shift clicking as I go come over here click and then shift click so I'm moving on down the length of the pier and let me make the brush a little bit larger using the right bracket key there. And now I have a nice dodged look. And it's a better match if I look at this. It's a better match to what we have over here in Alex's image. 
So let's take a look now at uh, what this image looked like as a color image relative to a high contrast black and white. Here's where we started. Uh, the image was flat and the color really wasn't doing anything to draw attention to specific parts of the scene. But once we applied a couple or a channel mixer, mixer layer and then a couple levels layer, levels layer, so I cannot talk, I'm so sorry, and then a dodge and burn layer here on top, we drove the image to something much more dramatic that really shapes the viewer's eye into uh, this pier which is leading out to this uh, bright part in the water and into this ominous or dramatic horizon out here with these clouds in the sky. So I think that is a pretty nifty technique and um, seems to work quite well with architectural images. I imagine it would work well with a lot of other types of images as well. But Alec, thanks for uh, taking the time to talk with me and submit this uh, uh, idea for the video tutorial and thank you all for visiting often at the Radiant Vista. We truly do appreciate everybody paying a visit from time to time and of course we would love to see you on our inspirational weekends which begin in June in Atlanta and then uh, we have three more this year. We have a Boulder, Colorado, a Seattle and a Philadelphia and next year uh, we are hoping to have between six and eight so we're going to be spreading out across the country and we sure do hope to get the opportunity to see you in person. Thanks very much. Bye.